This is a special episode of the Stem Cell Podcast, ISSCR 2023, Day 1. Hey everybody, we are Daylon and Arun. Welcome back to the Stem Cell Podcast, where we culture knowledge and stem cell research by talking to some of the brightest minds in the field. Yesterday launched the start of the 2023 ISSCR annual meeting in Boston, Massachusetts, and me and Arun and the whole Stem Cell Podcast team are attending the meeting. Drop by the Stem Cell Podcast booth in the exhibit hall for a chance to win some prizes. And to find out how you could be featured on the podcast, you can also meet Arun and I at the Meetup Hub in the exhibit hall on Friday, June 16th at 9.30 a.m. We'll be hanging out and chatting with listeners. Really looking forward to that. Today and every day throughout the meeting, we will be re releasing special episodes discussing our favorite sessions and events at ISSCR 2023. So if you weren't able to attend the meeting, We've got you covered. We're going to kick things off in just a minute. But before we get to that, can't get enough stem cell science. Stem cell technologies has a huge selection of webinars available on demand. Visit www.stemcell.com slash webinars to explore your favorite topics in stem cell research. And indeed, here we are at day one of ISSCR 2023. It's nice to see everybody here, mostly in person. I know it's also happening virtually, but I, you know, my initial feeling was that there's actually more people here in person than there were last year. And uh, honestly, fewer masks as well. I guess that makes sense. But it's really nice to see that energy in person. I'm a very much in-person guy, and I think you are as well. And it's uh, it's already happened a few times where we've run into people in the hallways and the uh, exhibit hall who are fans of the show, which is really always refreshing to see. And they're actually dropping some hints about some new stories that they're going to be releasing in the the time to come. So thank you everybody for, for, you know, for saying, Hey, and saying hello. And we can't wait to chat with you more with the uh, delegate sessions that we have coming up over the course of ISSCR 2023. So before actually day one, I suppose there was day zero, which is actually the preclinical and uh, space workshops that were happening before today, actually right before today was yesterday, a uh, couple of great uh, pre-meeting workshops. And I was actually a part of the space workshop, uh, pretty heavily involved in that and moderating a panel on stem cell research in space. This is actually a really important topic to me and near and dear to my heart, of course, you know, I've been involved in some research projects, sending stem cells to the space station and figuring out the effect of microgravity on the cells of the human body and the stem cells. And it was really well attended. I was really pleased to see that around 100 to 150 folks uh, listening to what we had to say about stem cells in space. That was cool to talk about. But also there was a clinical translation workshop that happened right before that, uh, which happens every year. I know a few years ago it was hosted at my home institution at Cedar sinai Really great crash course into the, the regulatory hurdles and all the different clinical hurdles that you have to meet to bring a cell therapy to the market and into clinical trials. So that was that was great. And also there was a fun little session in the evening at Stem Cells at the Planetarium, which I was actually a part of as well. Got to go to the Charles Hayden Planetarium over at the Boston Museum of Science, give a planetarium show, which I've never done before, projected PowerPoint slides onto the top of a planetarium dome. That's a unique presentation, I got to tell you, but it was a lot of fun. And this morning, you know, bright and early before actually the plenary sessions and while Dalen was actually still on your, your airplane, I was attending some of the sessions in the morning. There was actually a really great session on technology and stem cell biology, you know, one of the focus sessions in the morning. Uh, really exciting to to cover there, you know, different uh, tools for basic and applied stem cell biology, as well as expanding the boundaries of stem cell technologies and applications. Those were just a couple of the sessions that I was involved with and uh, just checked out this morning. A lot of interesting talks from Chris Austin, Masayo Takahashi, familiar faces in, in developing these cutting edge technologies in stem cell biology. Also, Mammoth Bio was represented there. They're the folks who are de-extincting the, the woolly mammoth, believe it or not, using stem cell based approaches. And then, you know, moving on to some of the innovation showcases, Dale and I, you both, uh, both of us actually checked out one of the innovation showcases focusing on high throughput organoid analysis from molecular devices really neat high content imaging of organoids and some uh, work that was actually delving into automated cell culture and automated handling of passaging iPSCs using their new Cell Express AI system. It's literally a giant box that supposedly 
does all of your IPS culture passaging, maintaining for you, feeding, weekend free culture, all this good stuff. You know, I mean, price point, I they didn't mention anything about that, but uh, certainly it's it's commercially available. So check it out if you're interested. And from there, you know, we uh, dove into the first plenaries. And why don't you take the lead on that particular session? Yes, I was off the plane and straight into the cauldron of the uh, tough sell there from uh, Oksana Serenko for molecular devices with that automated self culture device. But um, I mean, it kind of sold itself in terms of the potential. But yeah, Arun and I were discussing price point. It was a little bit of a coming soon scenario. We'll see uh, when the rubber meets the road if that thing is really going to have potential. But then, yeah, it was on to the plenaries, which I thought were terrific. I mean, uh, it started with a brief introduction from Hai Fan Lin. Uh, president of the ISSCR, who underscored that we had uh, 3,500 plus attendees to the meeting. So we're getting back to the big numbers here post pandemic. Also, a brief word from uh, Stefan Irian from Blue Rock, who's a major sponsor here, talking about how science goes beyond the borders, a message of inclusion, uh, inspiring progress that's happened over the last 21 years since the inception of ISSCR talking about his gray hairs that have accumulated over the time. Pretty funny comment there. And uh, back to Haifan, who, uh, again, uh, you know, was just talking about the same thing, uh, echoed the, the same message there of inclusion, increasing the access to the science uh, amongst people across the world. Uh, and we saw that, you know, to, uh, shout out right here to Rustan, uh, Rustem, sorry, our number one fan from Kazakhstan. Who we ran into also, Sergey, who was talking to us about the SK cocktail. We might talk to those guys later in the side sessions, which I encourage all you guys who want to talk with us uh, or get on the air to, to check that out. Um, but Hi Fan introduced, I think, a very apt uh, first speaker who was Magdalena Zernica Goats, uh, the notorious MZG from Caltech, who was really, I think, fitting and apt uh, given the year we've had the synthetic embryos. She's been a pioneer there. She talked about building the mammalian embryo and here i think she started a trend that i think was echoed by all the other speakers highlighting the postdocs everyone who i've, I've heard speak has really put the the trainees the people who've done the work out front uh and i really love that and we got to do more of that on the show too we've gotten some feedback from guests so we're we're trying to highlight the the trainees as well the grad students postdocs at all levels those who contributed to the work uh, back to the notorious she talked about how we've really cracked the box you know implantation that's where we're getting at and it reminded me of my good old days with the xenopus because i remember you could see the all of development right before your eyes in pond water and uh, now we're approaching that with mammalian embryos so it was really exciting uh talked about our unpublished work in human which was amazing mechanism of pgc formation then it was on to Nan Tang from the National Institute of Biological Science in Be Beijing talking about uh, lung regeneration. Um, this was a mind blowing to me that it wasn't until 2012 that we had real clear evidence in human that pneumonectomy was followed by lung regeneration. Since then, I mean, very young field uh, relatively. And since then, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of it driven by Nan Tang. Here she was highlighting the role of mechanical force and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with some really amazing models that she was describing. Um, then it was on to Bob Langer uh, from MIT. I mean, Hai Fan Ling in his introduction, it took him five minutes just to list his accolades. Uh, but Bob Langer was pretty garden variety. I mean, when you've been in the game 50 years, you just get up there and entertain. I mean, he really fit the bill there. He told some funny stories, talked about really his overarching efforts and influence on the field, which has been massive. Um, monumental. Uh, and I think an inspiring note there talked about how early on he was a bit of a maverick and he was rejected by most, which I think is something that all of us need to hear that uh, a lot of failures are followed by great success. Uh, then it was on to Helen Blau, speaking of not the failure part, but the great success. He was the Ernest McCullough Memorial Lecture, talking about rejuvenating uh, aged muscles, something I'm very interested in. And talking about this concept of this gerozyme, I mean, I love the idea of this, this pivotal uh, molecular determinant of aging and how we need to focus on inhibiting that and to increase the human health span, not just our lifespan. Um, and uh, then it was that was it for that uh, plenary. I, I thought it was an amazing intro, uh, really wide ranging, uh, giving a, a, a insight into and the past year and the past 21 years of, of, of the 
society in which we've really come very far uh, in terms of the therapeutic scope of stem cells, but also really original intent was to look into human development. Um, and I think that this uh, presidential really underscored uh, how much success we've had. And I think that's going to be a theme of this meeting, Arun. Yeah, overall, really great intro plenary one, a nice opening to ICCR 2023, you know, opening remarks from Haifan Lin. And really, I was struck by the evolution of the society, seeing how much it's grown from its inception from day zero when Len Zahn and friends were just sitting in a, in a conference room, 50 to 100 people. And now we're here at 3,500 people in person, in ICCR 23, 23 in Boston with some folks online as well. Really great turnout. And I think having Magdalena as the opening speaker was was important because it also reflects the emphasis of the ICCR and the stem cell society and the stem cell field on these early embryo models. It's in my mind, and I've said this before, the hottest subfield within stem cell biology is this early developmental modeling of human development in particular. And it's also really cool to see her present some unpublished data in, in some of the, the work that she's doing. Nanteng and some of the imaging that uh, you know she was working on was you know really incredible, looking at the, the driving force of lung regeneration. Bob Langer is Bob Langer, and he can talk about whatever the hell he wants, honestly. He's actually supposedly the second highest cited person in the world, which makes me wonder who's number one, actually. I, I actually don't know that. If you guys know the answer, let us know. But yes, he had, had a great overview of his scientific story all the way back from the 70s when he was initially working on some of the initial nanoparticles delivering anti-angiogenic uh, inhibitors, preventing tumor development. Really great to see the evolution in, in his work over the years. Helen Blau, of course, from Stanford, you know, giving the Ernest McCullough Memorial Lecture, really an expert in all things skeletal muscle, uh, stem cell biology. And this is a, just a really great opening session. It was just great to see the, the energy in the room. It was totally packed. And I do not, honestly, I don't remember seeing that last year. It was a nice reflection of how perhaps we're moving beyond the the, the negatives of the pandemic and people are more comfortable with interacting with each other in person. That's what it seems like. Moving on to the second plenary, and again, fantastic overview. These plenaries, honestly, I think they're more for the trainees because those old hats like us who have been in the field forever, we know these folks. We know them by name. We've heard their, their work, and certainly in some aspects, they're presenting unpublished work. But for the most part, 80 to 90% of what they're presenting is stuff that those of us have, who have been in the field, we're familiar with. So the trainees, though, this is all brand new to them. I mean, that's part of the reason that I invited my own laboratory to, to come here to ICCR to learn about what these dignitaries, these folks in the field who have been around forever are doing. So plenary number two, Jay Shindure, uh, expert on all things genomics from the University of Washington, talking about some of the cutting edge molecular technologies that they've developed in collaboration with actually another pioneer in genomics, David Liu at uh, the Broad Institute, uh, incorporating David Liu's some of so their prime editing technologies for barcoding, lineage tracing technologies, and developing what's called a DNA typewriter system. Really, really cool to, to evaluate there, really cool to look at. Emma Rollins, who actually has been on the show pretty recently, talking about building the human lungs and lessons from organoids and gene editing, uh, studying human lung development thanks to improvements in you know, lung organoid expansion and differentiation. This is not from IPS. This is primary lung organoids, which they get from fetal samples, and they expand out to, to great extent for great translational and basic science applications. Uh, Anshul Kanjaje from Stanford, and actually presenting some work that, from somebody who I'm pretty familiar with, Mo Amin, a trainee at Stanford who has progressed all the way from an IPS biologist and somebody who is basically cranking out IPS lines at Stanford to now somebody who's actually a senior scientist at Lumina. Really great to see his progression from trainee to scientist. And that particular talk was focusing more on machine learning, on the AI side of things, decoding single cell chromatography and dynamics during fibroblast reprogramming, a lot we're still trying to figure out about that reprogramming process and unraveling the mysteries of IPS production using deep learning. Xiaowei Zhuang, you're looking at spatially resolved single cell genomics and developing a single cell atlas of the brain using transcriptomic based approaches. And a lot of talks in this plenary session emphasize the role of single cell barcoding and single cell lineage tracing. 
in various applications. She talked about how they developed this MERFISH or multi multiplexed error robust fluorescent in situ hybridization or FISH. And they actually extended that to some single cell epigenome imaging as well. Really mind blowing, uh, spatially resolved imaging that they're able to do on the whole mouse brain. And they're actually extending that to the human cortex as well. And finally, Olivier Porquier from Harvard, who's the Anne McLaren Memorial Lecture presenter, talking about deconstructing human musculoskeletal development in vitro and applying his lab's beautiful in vitro somatogenesis work uh, that they've published recently and that we've actually covered a few times here on the show. Um, they have these iPS-derived models of somatogenesis incorporating fluorescent reporters and somatoids and segmentoids, and also some stuff that I just was not familiar with. I didn't realize his lab actually did some more translationally oriented stuff with these uh, grafting human satellite cells into dystrophin mutant mice. And finally, some very recent work, which is uh, producing human brown and adipocyte fat cells from iPSCs. Uh, a differentiation process that I was surprised has not been already produced yet. So this also has some translational applications for diabetes as well. So really broad scope of different talks here at the plenary sessions one and two, and we're just getting started here at ICCR 2023. Yeah, I got to give props to uh, David Scadden on the program design here because it's so tight and, and it, the flow between the talks uh, and cohesion within the sessions is brilliant. Uh, and this one, what it said to me was the, the two, I mean, was uh, what's possible, you know, from uh, that, that story about the DNA typewriter, you know, in terms of lineage tracing one cell to 1 million, you know, I, I think, you know, I don't want to overstate any kind of AI. Everyone loves the AI BS nowadays, but I mean, I could see it when you, when you complex the kind of machine learning with these technologies and these innovations, you could talk about one cell to one trillion uh, and really map all of like a mouse's development uh, up to adulthood. I mean, maybe that sounds crazy and maybe it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if in a decade from now at the ISSCR 2033, the 31st, that we'll be seeing something like that. I mean, 21 is an app number for this, 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 it's, we've reached maturity. And I'm about to go out and have a drink after seeing all this just to wrap my head around it. But yeah, it's what's possible between that one with the DNA typewriter. And then there was also Zhao Wei Zhuang, as you, as you mentioned, that the spatial transcriptomics was off the chain. I mean, we had some transcriptome, epigenome, proteome, and 3D genome all at like subcellular resolution. That's insane. Um, and finally, I love the, the Anne McLaren lecture and the Anne McLaren session, even, I would say, because Emma Rollins, who, um, you know, as you said, she got those uh, lung organoids from fetal tissue. Uh, Anne McLaren very famously stood up for the value of embryonic stem cell research and fetal tissue research to the toughest audience. You know, we're talking about the Pope. So uh, I think she would be very gratified to see the strides that have been made uh, with fetal tissue research, but also uh, I think she'd be really gratified to see the kind of work that uh, Olivier Porquier is doing um, in terms of like shining light inside the black box of human development using organoids and synthetic embryo models that we, we've seen already in these sessions and we're going to keep seeing. I think uh, Dr. McLaren would love the fact that all the, the foundation that was laid in, in these, you know, embryonic stem cell and fetal tissue models has allowed us to now do without them and, and really appease all these um, objectors. Uh, but we had to get the science down first in the bona fides, right? So I just love that the end of it, I really was feeling it, you know, as you said, the energy in the room, Arun, and, and this, the, the, the way these talks were put together, I'm so excited for day two and the rest of this conference. This is going to be a home run already. It's, you know, really the best conference I've been to. I'm not lying. Yeah, it's been fantastic so far. The energy is definitely there. It's great to see everybody's faces in person. Not as many masks, I suppose, but that's your choice, of course. But yes, indeed, there's a scope and a scale to the talks that are here. Of course, we've got stuff ranging from space. And the first time there's actually been a space-related session at ISCR, which is Amazing from a personal point of view, of course, but also incorporating all these new advances in AI, machine learning, 
high resolution imaging automation for cell culture. We're talking about, of course, all the brand new cool technologies that are being highlighted here at ISSCR. And of course, we're mostly just focusing on the plenary sessions for today. But in my mind, the real meat and potatoes and the heart of the ISSCR are the trainee sessions and the the poster sessions that are one of which is happening tonight, this is Wednesday, but also the breakout sessions that are going to be led mostly by trainee presentations. So we want to do our part in highlighting you. So if you are interested in talking about your work, come on down and chat with us at the delegate sessions as well. We'd love to talk about the, the work that you're presenting here at ICCR. Yeah, you know what else I've seen a lot of? Uh, so far as Rue Gunawardani. I, I must have seen her like five or six times. Next, tomorrow, day two, I'm, I'm going for 10. All right? We're going to play a game at this this year's conference. Uh, but that brings us to the end of our first ISSCR 2023 episode. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Stem Cell Podcast, to find out what we're up to at the meeting. And visit, visit us at the Stem Cell Podcast booth in the exhibit hall to participate in some recordings in our on-site studio. Check back here tomorrow for another episode recapping day two of the meeting. Until then, thank you so much for listening and we hope to see you in person and in the future. And uh, we'll bring you another episode soon. 